This is the HSF Tools F2W handheld thermal camera, and I'm going to tell you all about it right now. Upon unboxing, you'll find the manual, a calibration certificate, a strap for the carrying case, the data slash charging cable with a USB-A to USB-C adapter, and of course, the carrying case along with the camera itself. The F2W is built with premium plastic and has a built-in rechargeable lithium-ion battery that lasts up to six hours. It's also impact-resistant, water-resistant, and weighs less than a pound. It also has 16 gigabytes of built-in storage that can hold up to 35,000 images. And there's also a 3.2 inch LCD display. I'll leave the tech specs from the manual on the screen now, just in case I leave out any details. So pause the video here to see those details. I love using my F2W to test the thermal output on the flashlights that I review, and also for paranormal research. The camera's advanced sensor detects tiny temperature changes, and I can monitor locations remotely and track temperature changes over time. The F2W has a 256 to 192 resolution that upscales up to 640 to 480, and you can record up to 2 minutes of video in 480 to 640 resolution at 25 frames per second using the app. You can also wirelessly mirror your camera to your phone using the app as well. The F2W is great for professionals and beginners, and I'm going to walk you through some of the menu options right now. I'm here with the F2W, and I'm going to show you guys some of the button pushes through here. We're going to walk through the menu. So first off, you have your albums, which is pretty self-explanatory. That's going to give you all the different uh, photos that you already taken. You can walk through there. Of course, that's me being crazy, but yeah, that's uh, what it looks like. You'll be able to go through that, You'll be able to back out through like this right here. So anytime you want to go back, you got your three buttons in the front here. One's for power, one's for going up and down, and then one's for backing out. And then over here, your next menu option is emissivity. And basically that's whatever radiant heat is coming off of an object. So say that you want to compensate for that heat element, you have the different types of materials that you'd be able to compensate for white paper, cardboard, cotton, soil, all those have different emissions. So that will compensate by, you know, whatever amount. And then of, obviously over here you have a custom, uh, so that way you can customize it a little bit more specifically. And that goes all the way from 0 0.01 to all the way up to 1.0. So that's pretty wide for the band there. And of course you have your distance and this is gonna be able to set your distance so like i'm about maybe a foot from the object here in front of me and if i want to go down there this does it in meters so about yeah roughly that then what's going to happen is you're going to notice it's going to be a little bit sharper the image is going to be a tiny bit sharper it's barely noticeable to the naked eye but uh, it does show you you know a little bit better picture you get a little bit better detail when you you know zoom in and stuff so there you go there's that option there and as far as the display settings you have your hot spot your cold spot and your center so if you see if i shut all these off all the stuff that was on the screen before is no longer there so there's that and then of course if we go back to the display settings and i turn them back all on that's what it's going to look like you're going to be able to have all your numbers up there your hot for your center you're going to have your max and then your minimum course I'm going to go back into it and then there's some more options where you can use user-defined spot on the screen you have the ability to turn those on and off then you have your screen brightness which is low high medium and then back to low I usually keep it on low because this is actually relatively bright for the screen then you have your units of measurement you have your Kelvin Celsius and Fahrenheit there and then of course the time and date for your stamp on your pictures then you have the super resolution option super resolution is pretty self-explanatory if you look at right now on the screen that's what it looks like and of course when you put it in the super resolution it just sharpens the image a little bit more that's all that does moving along to palettes of course it gives you a bunch of different palette options all right but you can access all the different palette options by just pressing down so when you press down it's going to give you all the different options so you have your iron bow, you have your rainbow, you have your white hot, 
and then you have your black hot, then you have your red hot, then you have your fusion, and then of course, right back to the iron bow. Moving down, you have level and span. Now level and span is kind of cool. When you, sh when you change the parameters, you're gonna have your highest level where you can change the sensitivity for it. So like right now we're at, uh, let's see. I'll put the highest level at 100, right? And then the lowest is gonna be at, let's put 90. No, actually let's put 80, 80. So some, so all the temperature that's in between 80 and 100 right there is on the screen now. And you'll be able to see just the stuff that's between 80 and 100, nothing else in the background, which I like. I like that option very much. And then you can obviously just turn it off and set it to auto. Another cool feature is the audible alarms. And that's pretty simple. All you have to do is turn that on turn on the alarm warning. And I have this one set specifically for the 100 degrees or more. Um, and you can set it for a lower output or a higher. And that's what the sound will sound like when it makes that sound. So let's try it out, right? So we have some background stuff going on here and we scan over. And right there in the background, we have something that's 111 degrees and it's making an audible sound so that you can hear it and you'll know that you've reached the temperature that you need to reach. And of course, you could always just go back in there and turn that off if that's not something that you want. Next one up, we have the temperature range and that's gonna be, I set mine for just auto. So this goes all the way from negative four to 1022 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty sweet. So I just leave that in auto. You know, you don't really need to change it unless you specifically want to. Then you have capture mode. Capture mode is if you want to save the images, if you want to schedule captured images. And so what the schedule is for is if you wanted to put this on a tripod and you can go ahead, I'll show you how to use it. Um, you can have intervals. So every five seconds or whatever you want, you can put it for minutes, hours, it will take a picture and um, it will take a number of five or 10 or one or two, you know, so whatever you want. And then obviously you can name the file as well um, down here by either timestamp or numbering and that's basically how that works but I just leave mine on on capture one image so that you can just pull the trigger and uh, capture image that way but you can schedule it almost like a time lapse and then moving along we also have more settings and now this is the Wi-Fi LAN so basically what you do is you turn that on and it's going to show you the available networks now I'm going to turn that off because this one, this particular Wi-Fi goes directly to the Wi-Fi that you have in your home or office. Um, and you're going to type, you're going to basically sign into that with your Wi-Fi password. And then you're going to be able to be anywhere in the building that the Wi-Fi is connected to the camera or to your phone. You're going to be able to use the app and it's a little bit less laggy than if you used the hotspot. Now, personally, I like the hotspot because you just, you turn the hotspot on, on your device. And then what you do is you just connect it through the Wi-Fi on your phone, and then it will connect through the app and you just can connect through the app after that. And um, it's very simple. It's a little bit laggy, but not totally laggy, but it's actually very useful. And this is perfect for if you're out on a job site and you don't, you don't have the ability to connect to your Wi-Fi network that's at your office or your home. So this is pretty portable. So this can basically help you in that sense. So obviously goes without saying auto power off. You can set that for 10 minutes all the way up to an hour. Uh, and then same thing with the auto sleep, 10 minutes all the way up to an hour. And then the about section is gonna give you the model number, your firmware, your serial number, your IP address, and your storage capacity, what, how much storage you have left. And then of course, if you wanted to update the firmware, you can do that directly from the app uh, when you are connected, either the hotspot or the Wi-Fi. And then of course you could save your logs and then format your storage. And that's pretty self-explanatory, or you can reset all the factory settings on your device. And this of course is for English or whatever other language you choose. English or French are the two options that you have there. So if you parlez vous français, then you of course you would change it to that. And then of course, that's all the menus. That's all she wrote for that. On the body of this, you have a door here. So you can close the lens off so you don't get any dust or any kind of stuff in there. And then you have your trigger to take pictures. And then you have 
a mount here. If you wanted to set it up and do that time-lapse thing like I was talking about, I'll put that on a tripod. That's, this will fit any tripod. You obviously have your lanyard here just in case you want to throw it around your wrist if you're in an area that you think you might drop it. Then obviously you have your C-type charging port there, and that's also your data port as well so that if you wanted to transfer stuff or to connect it to your computer and use the software, um, that you can download off their website. Very robust. One of the things I did notice about this is it's very robust. It feels high quality. Um, it looks like, if you're looking on the website, it looks like, oh, this is gonna be a cheap plastic thing, but this has some girth to it. It's very heavy. Uh, not very heavy, it's, it's, it's actually pretty lightweight. In fact, I'll show you exactly how much it weighs on the screen now. And um, yeah, so it's not too bad at all, guys. I think you guys are gonna really enjoy this uh, when it comes to quality, because this is, I think, just as good, if not better quality, than uh, some of the other higher end thermal cameras on the market. Um, like I said, for around $300, uh, this is the equivalent of a $1,500 uh, flare camera, or if you prefer Seek, uh, that's also an option as well. So let's take it out and uh, see what it's all about. I wirelessly use the camera's app to monitor my car engine heating up remotely, so let's take a look at what that looks like right now. This video has been sped up to save a little bit of time. I also tested the thermal output of some of the flashlights here in the studio just to get a better idea of what this camera was capable of. And as you can see, the image quality and resolution is excellent for the needs that I have here in the studio. The F2W can also be used to inspect circuit boards for potential heat issues. As you can see in this demonstration, I'm testing out the thermal output on the circuit board of an infrared light emitter that I'm building for my paranormal research team. The F2W can also be used as a security tool to detect body heat up to 164 feet away, and as you can see in this demonstration, it works very well. So in conclusion, the FW2 is a do-it-all thermal camera at a great price, coming in at just $339 on Amazon. So if you're looking for a thermal camera at a reasonable price without having to shell out up to $1,000 for other well-known brands, then the F2W is a great option for you. I'll leave a link down in the description. I hope this video has been helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Prepared Guy, and until next time, guys. Stay prepared. Hey there, thank you for watching. You can pat this cat.